Okay, so can everyone hear me? Yeah. So I'm presenting the paper, um, Automated Agent Decomposition for Classical Planning, um, with my supervisors, Michael Rabatsos and Ron Patrick. Uh, so here's an overview of my talk. I'm going to start with um, telling you what, what it is we do, and then give an example problem. So, what's the plan? The plan is just to use um, agent decomposition for the standard classical IPC domains um, and a heuristic planning approach to solve problems as fast as possible. Um, it's already been shown that a lot of the IPC domains have a sort of inherent multi-agent structure, um, but currently um, there seems to be a bit of a gap where obviously a lot of planning wants to be domain independent, but there's not many domain independent methods for finding these decompositions. And secondly, there's not many methods uh, implemented that um, are competitive with um, other plans running in a single agent version of these problems. So when you take an agent decomposition, what you do is you take this big set of actions or big problem and make lots of little problems out of it, which you hope are easier to solve on their own. But then you create this big complicated coordination problem between, between all those. So the idea is either to make the coordination problem as easy as possible, or to find clever ways to solve the coordination problem. Um, so, what we present is, first of all, an <coughs> agent decomposition algorithm. Uh, the input is a classical planning problem and it outputs an agent decomposition. I mean, sometimes it doesn't output one because it can't find one, but in the cases where we expect to find one, it outputs one. And the second thing is a heuristic planning algorithm based on an FF planner that um, exploits the decomposition. Um, the hypothesis basically being that um, if we can find such decompositions, then um, if we can modify FF to exploit them, then we can solve the planning problems much faster than FF does. Um, so here's an example problem. Uh, it's a very, very simple planning problem, but it has enough of the qualities um, that we need to discuss to see what's going on. So you have two robots, A and B, and they're in a grid world. They can move uh, to any adjacent square, but they can only move to places that are currently empty. And their goal here is to move to the uh, start location and then to report that they've been there. If you try and solve this problem yourself, or any human solving this problem, it's very natural to split it up and think of the two robots as separate entities, take a multi-agent approach. Um, you will move A to the goal, right, to the left. Um, it will report there, and then you'll move it out of the way so that B can get there. Um, and so although this problem is very small, it's interesting because um, all of A's actions, or all of its move actions, uh, change what B can do. So there's a sort of strong interaction between the agents and the problem. And our approach is to, um, first of all, try and find a way that you can extract these agents from the problem, like the generalizers, and also to find a search algorithm that sort of mimics the human approach. So literally, move A across to the, to the goal area, and then, oh, A's in the way, we'll move it out of the way, and then solve for B separately. Uh, so now I'll give you sort of some of the background for the, um, the formalism that we're going to work with. Um, the standard approach in uh, multi-agent planning or decomposition planning uh, from the multi-agent perspective is that you partition the actions in the domain. Uh, each action goes to an agent and then you try and find sets such that these actions um, don't interact much between the agents, and that thereby reducing the coordination problem. Um, but coming at this from a sort of multi-agent standpoint, um, this seems to miss something. Um, common definitions of agents, um, they are situated in some environment and they are capable of autonomous action. And when you just partition the action sets, you sort of don't, you don't explicitly deal with the environment they're, looking, they're, they're acting in, which is obviously important in, planning, in most planning domains. And autonomous, I mean, what does that mean in a planning, in a planning case where we don't really care much about the agents themselves, we're just using them as a tool to solve things faster? Well, I'm saying that autonomous here, we mean, well, there must be some part of the problem that the agent has control over, that it's, it's part of the problem. And that part we call that agent's internal state. So now, instead of agents being partitioning of actions, we sort of move back a little. Uh, we use a variable uh, representation of the domain, and now agents are defined by a set of variables that will represent their internal state. Um, and there'll be some variables left over, and these will represent the environment that therefore the agents are acting in. And then we can use this variable partition uh, to create our action partition. But now there may be actions that belong to multiple agents or just belong to the environment, not necessarily one agent. 
Um, so just so that everyone is on the same page, uh, this is a variable representation of the uh, example problem. Uh, for all our implementation, we've implemented it in class downward, and we just use the variable representation that class downward finds for all the problems. Um, so you see it splits it into these variables, and the interesting ones are variable 5 and variable 6, and these represent the locations of what we will want to call the agents in the domain. And you can see sort of, there's, a, there's already a link between these variables, this variable rep representation and internal states of agents. Um, to make that a bit more formal, uh, variable de decomposition is just a partitioning of the variable set, but one of those partition sets will be the environment that agents are acting in. And then, given a partitioning, we can assign actions to each agent. And we'll do that by giving an action to an agent if one of the preconditions, if the preconditions contain a variable belonging to that agent. And once we've done this, we can have an agent subproblem of the problem, of the full problem, which is just the um, full problem, but every part is reduced to only contain the public and environment variables and the variables that belong to that particular agent. <coughs> and to make sure that these agents have this property where we can say that it's their internal state um, that is being represented, uh, we basically say that all actions in the domain, um, if an action can change part of an agent's internal state, it must be that agent's action. Um, if we have joint actions in the domain, these are actions that uh, have pre things in their preconditions that belong, belong to multiple agents. Um, this still doesn't sort of preserve the internal state idea. So you'll see later that we drop um, any domains with joint actions in them. So now an action belongs to an agent if it involves that agent's internal state and its preconditions. And now we know if we have an agent decomposition that that agent cannot affect any of another agent's internal state. Um, so to give you a picture of this, we've got the whole problem, and we've got individual variables representing agents, and then this big set of variables, usually quite big, that represent the environment. And each agent can now do things that interact with the environment, and that will change what other agents can potentially do, but no agent can do something that interacts directly with the variable set of another agent. Um, so that's the background, um, now I'm going to explain the decomposition algorithm. Um, so as I said, the input is just any standard planning problem that class down can find an MPT representation for, and the output is an agent variable decomposition if one exists. Uh, the method for doing this, we use the causal graphs, also generated by class downward, um, because there's a link there between the causal graph structure and these internal variable sets. Um, and as I said, the properties we look for are agent variable decompositions that don't have any joint actions, we maximize the number of agent variables, I minimize the number of uh, variables left as the environment, and we obviously want more than one agent. Uh, so this is the causal graph for the uh, problem I've given. Um, I won't go through any of the details here, um, but one nice result you can get very quickly is that if the causal graph has root nodes, those root nodes um, have the agent variable property. Uh, the agent variable de they can become part of an agent variable decomposition. Um, but as you can see, uh, even in this very simple domain, there's no root nodes in this causal graph. So the um, next result is if you remove two-way cycles from the graph uh, that are caused by the same action, um, then the root nodes of the reduced graph um, also have this property, as long as it induces no joint actions in the domain. So we do this, and then we get to the graph on the right, and then we can take the agent, the variable, which was V5 before, that represents A's location, as one of the agents, and B's location as the other agent. And then there's a few other things we can do. We can extend down arrows in the graph um, under certain conditions, basically when no other incoming arrow it doesn't belong to that agent, so you can do this recursively to get bigger sets. And uh, we can also merge agents um, when joint actions are created. And in fact, we can, the result from before, that um, it's only an agent variable decomposition if there's no joint actions, we can create one anyway, and then merge them later, and it will still have the property that it is an agent variable decomposition. Uh, so this is the result of running that algorithm on the um, IPC domains. These are all the domains that returns a decomposition for. Um, obviously, if you want more details of the uh, algorithm, it's in the paper. Um, I think I'll just pick a few things out of here. Uh, one thing to note is the agent variable percentage column. Uh, it's sort of, that's the, the percentage of the variables in the domain that belong to an agent in the decomposition. 
It sort of very wide, very, varies wildly and it doesn't seem to be related to how well we can plan later. So, if, for example, in the airport domain, which we plan very fast in, um, very few of the domains actually, uh, of the variables actually are used to decide what the agents are. The rest are public or environment variables. Um, so that was the decomposition algorithm. I'll now explain the search algorithm. So the idea here was basically take FF and exploit our decomposition at every time we can. So always solve agent subproblems and simplify the coordination problem as much as humanly possible. Um, FF was chosen because um, obviously, as everyone knows, it's got a very good heuristic estimate and it's very easy to compute. But also, it has some nice qualities in the computation that allow us to um, basically exploit um, the relaxed planning graphs to um, solve the coordination problem. And I'll explain that now. So, um, here's a representation of a relaxed planning graph. Um, in the standard FF heuristic, you would create that for the, all the actions in the domain. Um, you sort of build this big graph, we start at the initial state, um, we apply all the actions, we get to a state which is slightly bigger, because there's no delete list, we keep going, and eventually, if a goal is reachable, it'll be in the graph somewhere. And then we extract back and find a heuristic value. In this case, we just do it separately for each agent. Um, from the starting position, agent A's graph will contain that it can move left and it can move up and then it can reach the goal. Agent B's graph will be empty, it can't, it can't do any actions, agent A's in the goal, or A is in the way. Um, so what we do in the search algorithm is we expand these graphs and we find agent A can reach a goal and we just read it and go down that route. Agent A goes to the goal. We plan for that using standard FF search on the agent subproblem. And so we end up with the position shown in the very bottom right. Um, agent A is at the goal, and then we go again. We start doing this process again. And now you can see they'll plan again, but again, B cannot reach the goal. In fact, no agent can reach the goal on their own from this position. Um, so there's a property that's useful in standard FF is that um, the graph will contain all reachable states eventually if you keep going. In this case, that's not true. So how do we get to the reachable states? Well, we tried a lot of stuff with um, sending messages across when you... Um, when you add a sort of public action or add something that could be used by another agent, i.e. you change something in the environment. But that just basically, sort of, instead of simplifying the coordination problem, you just embrace it and then you just create the same big problem again, just solved in a slightly different method. So to keep the coordination problem as simple as possible, what we do is if you get to the end of the graphs and no goal has been reached, none of the sub, um, none of the sub goals uh, contained in the first uh, round of planning graphs, then you just take the reunion of all states reached, and they become the input for a second um, second round of creating these relaxed planning graphs. Um, and from here, if you repeat this process um, any number of times you need, you'll eventually get to all reachable propositions. Um, in practice, most of the domains um, will find uh, goals in the first layer at all times. Uh, some of the domains needed three rounds of this before they found all the goals. Um, but because, it's because we're dealing with the relaxation, you can add a lot of things very quickly, so you never really need to go far down this big tree. And so on the right, um, we're, I'm showing again the position we've reached, and from there, there, in the bottom right, shows the sort of collected state of both of the agents at the end of their first planning graph. And from, from that position, we will have the fact that x is free, y is free, z is free, y dash is free. And in the next round, b can easily move across to the goal. So the way the search algorithm works, um, we need to extract from this goal in the second layer. And it turns out this is very, very simple. You do exactly how, how it works in FF. It's just when you extract backwards, you might end up flipping between these agent graphs. You just extract down to whoever added that proposition. And you get back to the beginning, eventually you'll be in the first layer. And then you can say, um, then you can solve the sub problem for the sub goal that you've created. So in this case, um, we want B to get to the goal location, we extract back, and we find to do that, A must have moved out of where it was. And so we solve for that sub goal that we've created. And again, we're only solving the agent sub problem, so it's very, very fast to solve that. Um, so you put that all together, and that's basically the algorithm. Um, so now I'll present the results. Um, here's the, most of the results. Um, this is all the uh, domains that it found a decomposition for. 
The top half is the domains that were always solvable with just one round of these graphs. Um, this doesn't mean that these domains have absolutely no interaction between the agents, it just means you never need to go further than one layer when you're solving this, each goal greedily, you know, one sub goal at a time. Um, and you can see that the search time, this is the um, sum of the search time for all the problems that were solved by um, all three of the algorithms tested, ADP being the agent decomposition planner. Um, it's much faster on most of the domains, uh, especially than FF, which was what we wanted to test it against. Um, for example, in Rovers it takes two seconds total, uh, whereas FS takes 21, and Lama takes 61 seconds. And you can see that the space expanded is generally significantly lower, so it's um, finding a much quicker route through the search space. Um, the cost we're not really interested in, we just wanted to find plans as fast as possible. And you can see the costs are sort of roughly similar, maybe they're worse than what well, they are, they're worse than Lama, and they're roughly the same, maybe marginally better than FS overall. The, the results in the bottom half, um, um, it doesn't perform as well, but it can still perform significantly better than standard FF. For example, on airport, solving them in 46 seconds compared to 66 seconds. Um, but compared to Llama, it's not doing as well. Um, I'll just go through a few of the results in more detail. Um, this graph is the planning time in seconds on the y-axis and the different problems across the x-axis. Uh, the black one, these are all problems for which all the um, Planners found a solution within the time I ran it. And the, so if you can't see the black line very well or a red line very well, that's because it took close to zero seconds to solve the problem. Uh, so you can see in the standard sort of domains that have a very easy decomposition, it, it performs much better than FF and um, better than Lama. And this is another domain that has a very sort of straightforward decomposition with not too much interaction. Um, this is the domain it performs worst on, and we believe it's because there were. This is one of the few domains that contain public actions, and public actions for us are actions that um, only involve environment variables. So we have to give them to every single agent because they're not, they don't contain anything that makes them unique to an agent. Um, but it's still performing okay, and, and when it has a problem, FF also has a problem, which maybe you might expect. And here's the airport domain, which has a lot of interaction between the agents that has the same property that they can't be in the same space at the same time. And you can see that the strategy of making these layers of relaxed planning graphs uh, is working effectively, especially compared to the single agent version of FF. Um, so finally, one sort of nice, interesting result. Um, I, said, I said that we um, only get decompositions without joint actions. Uh, that's because of all, all sorts of problems arise when we try to get ones that contain joint actions. First of all, it's much harder to plan past, and secondly, um, you get decompositions, really weird ones for domains, uh, such as, for example, FreeCell decides to put what looks like random variables together and they form separate agents. Um, but the Barman domain, um, what you end up doing if you get rid of that uh, condition that there's no joint actions, so when you merge agents, um, you will still merge them if there's more than two agents left over, uh, but you won't merge them down to one over. So you might end up with joint actions in the main. In the bar and domain, you end up splitting the left hand from the right hand, and um, actually it turns out that planning over that doesn't actually involve this um, much uh, coordination between the agents. You just can literally use one hand in most of these domains. So it ends up solving them very, very, very fast compared to um, both FF and Lama, and even finding them um, with much greater cost, um, even though like this is a sort of different version of the algorithm that doesn't normally work very well. And I think that's just uh, more an interesting result on how the Barman domain is structured and that uh, this is possible as a sort of cheating way to solve it than, uh, than anything else. But I thought it was interesting. So, thank you today. Uh, so finally, um, agent decompositions. Uh, we represent agents by uh, variables and those variables are going to be the agent's internal state. And we can use causal graphs to find these agent decompositions and we find a decomposition in just under, I think it was a third of the IPC domains. And in terms of the search, um, we've shown that the FF heuristic can be applied effectively in these multi-agent settings, and that the relaxed coordination problem is actually quite easy to solve. And um, it's always better than the uh, single agent FF version of the problem, and uh, ends up being mostly better uh, than Lama. And um, for completeness, there are the references of the papers that were in the talk earlier. And that's it.